Hey guys, and welcome to this video where I'm going to be sharing with you how to make a very simple six ingredient sandwich bread that uses homemade yeast or AKA sourdough and you don't have to have any milk or any eggs to make this and one of the six ingredients happens to be water. So besides a little bit of sugar, which you can omit if you want, salt, flour, and water and then a little bit of butter, which you can use any fat source that you want. I happen to love just a little bit of but flavor that butter brings to it, but you can also use ghee, you could use lard, you can use melted coconut oil, or you could use avocado oil, pretty much any oil that you want. When we're making a sandwich bread, that little bit of fat content just helps the texture to be better for when we're slicing it and to help create, um, you don't want it crumbly, right? Sandwich bread, a lot of crumbs, not ideal. Having this little bit of fat content in there helps to combat that. So we're gonna be using, like I said, homemade yeast, or AKA sourdough, to make this recipe. So to start off with, you're gonna to wanna to have a large mixing bowl. Now to get a printable copy of this recipe, you can hop over to my blog, and I have a written blog post there for you for the exact measurements. So we're gonna have a large mixing bowl, and you can do this by weight if you happen to have a kitchen scale. As you get into bread baking, when you do things by weight, it just makes it a lot more exact and easier, but I also have it done out for you if you don't have a scale, just in measuring with cups and tablespoons and teaspoons. So if you do have a scale, we're gonna get that going in our large mixing bowl, and we're gonna be putting in First, our liquid ingredients. So we're gonna be using approximately one cup of sourdough starter. Now, if you are newer to bread baking, especially with sourdough starter, when we're doing something like this, it's a sandwich bread or a bread that we need it to rise, you do need your sourdough starter to be in what we call an active state, and you also need it to be a mature sourdough starter. So if you're just starting your sourdough starter and it's just a week or two old, it's not strong enough to try bread baking yet. You will be disappointed. And if you don't have a sourdough starter, I have a free video series that's gonna walk you through how to make a sourdough starter and how to know when it is strong enough to bake bread. And I'll have that link for you below or you can just go to mostcanoris.com forward slash learn sourdough. So we got our starter here that's in its active state, ready to add in the rest of our liquid ingredients. One of my favorite things when you're mixing by hand is a Danish dough whisk. This makes incorporating any type of flour and liquid together so much easier. Time to begin adding in our flour. Now, in my full-on sourdough and homemade bread and baking course, I walk you through how to make sourdough bread using all-purpose flour, fresh ground flour, ancient grain einkorn, and gluten-free. But for this recipe, because I know most people have all-purpose or bread flour on hand, and you might not have those other types of flours or a mill to grind your own, I'm gonna be making it today with all-purpose flour. And then here we're gonna be adding our salt and our sugar. Now if you're doing this by hand, you can just incorporate it here with your spoon or your whisk, or you can transfer this over to your KitchenAid mixer. So we're going to use the kneading attachment and we're gonna knead this for eight minutes. So you can use any standard size loaf pan, which is a nine by five inch. My absolute favorite and the only way I bake bread is using a cast iron loaf pan. So we do wanna grease it. I'm just gonna use a little bit of coconut oil. You can really use any type of fat you want. I generally don't use butter to grease it, but coconut oil is a great choice, so is lard. Or you can use something like avocado oil as well, or even a little bit of olive oil, whatever, whatever you have on hand but you do wanna make sure that we get this grease so that our loaf does not stick to the pan. The great thing about using a cast iron loaf pan like this is every time we bake with it and use it, the seasoning gets better and it becomes more non-stick. 
Now, if you're curious about using cast iron and how to season it properly, I've got a video on that and I'll link to it below in the video description. Make sure you've got that nicely greased. There we go. And now we're going to form our loaf. Now you wanna need this for eight to 10 minutes and we're gonna test it to make sure that it's passing the window pane test. That's how you know with any type of bread, regardless if you're using store-bought yeast or homemade yeast like sourdough, if the gluten is sufficiently developed. So you take a small amount, kind of like about a golf ball size, and you're going to stretch that between your fingers and the dough should stretch enough that you can actually see light coming through it before it tears. So that's why it's called the window pane test. So you're going to stretch that nice and thin and if you can see light coming through, which I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up, but I totally can see light coming through there, then I know that this is ready to go ahead and form my loaf so that it can begin to rise. Now when you are making a loaf, either a round artisan type loaf or even a sandwich loaf, it's really important that you create tension on the top of the loaf so that it rises, it holds that nice, we want that taut surface so that it rises without collapsing. So an easy way to do this is to take your loaf pan, if you're doing a sandwich loaf, and we're just gonna roll this dough out, kind of like if you were doing cinnamon, cinnamon rolls. So I like to roll it out in a rectangle. And then that short end of the rectangle, I make it to be approximately the long ways part on my loaf pan. Then you're just going to take it and we're gonna roll it up tightly, kind of just like if you were rolling up cinnamon rolls, except you don't have anything in the center there. And then you're going to take it and you're gonna tuck it under and kind of pull it like this. And then you can kind of just shape it a little bit to the size of your loaf pan. And then this is going to, remember it's going to expand and it's going to rise quite a bit. But, and don't worry about that you've got these folds and stuff on the bottom. The weight of this as it settles in the pan and as it rises is gonna fill all of that out. So then we put that in our pan here. And then we need to let this rise. Now with sourdough, it's going to take it longer to rise than if you're used to using store-bought yeast. The temperature of your home and the humidity always affects that rise time. So the warmer it is, the faster it's going to rise. And because this has a longer rise time, we wanna make sure that the top of our loaf does not get a dry, dry out or doesn't develop like a skim on top because it's getting too dry. So you can use a damp tea towel and put on top of there, or if you happen to have plastic bags hanging around, you can also put it inside of that. You just wanna make sure that the bag or whatever you're using over top of this as it rises um, is it pushing down or sticking to the top of your loaf because as it rises and then you have to move that off to bake it, uh, you don't want it to then deflate your loaf. So the rise kind of time can be anywhere from two to three hours if your house is really warm and your sourdough starter is nice and active, up to sometimes five or six hours. It's gonna depend on the type of flour you're using and the strength of your sourdough starter and the temperature. So I'm gonna get this covered up. One of the areas that I like to have it, especially if I need it to rise quickly, if I didn't start it early enough in the morning, is in the oven with just the oven light on or if your house is on the colder end of the spectrum. So we're gonna let this rise and then I will meet you back here right before bake time. Okay guys, so this has been rising for close to six hours. Funnily enough, right as I told you guys to use your oven light to create a nice warm proofing box, my oven light burned out and I didn't have a replacement bulb. So it's been six hours. The house was a little bit chilly today. We were about 68 degrees Fahrenheit for this to rise up. But one of the important keys to get a great top crust on your sandwich bread and so it's not too tough is right before it goes into the oven, which we have preheated, is to take a little bit of melted butter and you wanna brush that on the top of your loaf. Put this into a preheated 400 degree Fahrenheit oven and let this bake. So the first thing that I like to do as soon as it comes out of the oven is we wanna get it cooling and slathered with butter. 
So I just take a knife, I'm not gonna damage any seasonings, just in case any part of it were to be sticking to the side, but really using these cast iron pans, I haven't had any problem with breads, either like my chocolate sourdough quick bread or my low sticking to this, like I have with other types of metals in the past. So I'm just gonna bring this out on its side here. And then we're gonna get this slathered with butter again. This helps to create that nice, soft, chewy outer crust and the extra butter just gives it a lot of fabulous flavor. Now, I know this is gonna be really hard, but you wanna make sure you let it cool, ideally an hour, but at least 30 minutes before cutting into it. If you cut into your fresh bread, too soon that's oftentimes why you'll have it be a little bit gummy or raw in the center so it's essential that you let this cool for a little bit i know it's super hard because it smells phenomenal and i just want to cut into it right now and if you need help learning how to make a sourdough starter so that you can create 100 percent homemade yeast or wild leaven cultured bread you can grab that free video series where i walk you through every step of that and to get the printable version of this recipe, you can head over to the blog at melissacanoris.com and grab it as well. Let me know below if you've got any questions on making homemade sourdough bread or any additional resources that I can help you out with. Thanks so much.